It's going to be a good episode today. You may want to tune in and watch. Guys, welcome to My Life, My Money. Uh, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure if this video adds value to anybody's lives, make sure you share it out. But today we're going to talk about why are we seeing so many, I guess, relationship channels or life channels talking about people who want a high income? What is up with that? Today we're going to talk about high income and the good, the bad, the ugly about it. All right, stay tuned. All right, we're going to start off with a definition first, but I need to put my glasses on so I can read the definition. Hold on. All right, let's start off with a definition of income. Income. All right, so I can't explain my whole definition because it may turn people off, but what I'm going to do is income is your money that comes in your pocket right now, comes in every month. Wealth is your money left over after all your expenses. So I don't want to lose nobody in this uh, technical definition. So I hit it slow. I hit it quick, but the good stuff is coming up. All right. Question number one. Why are so many people focused on income over wealth? Hmm? That's an excellent question, Lewis. I think so many people focus on income over wealth because they don't know no better. They don't know the difference. Now, now I'm, let's speak on the black community right quick. 32.5% of black people in our community don't have no wealth or a negative wealth. So if you don't have nothing, how you going to know about something? Think about it. If you don't have nothing, how you going to know about something? But one thing most people know about is income. Either they receive it from working a job, they get it from uh, the government as in a form of a check, or etc. And uh, that's the reason why people really push income over wealth, because they don't know no better. They don't know no better. Now, just let me put it like this. Income is great because it pays your current bills. But wealth is God's preferred way because it pay it can pay your current, future, your kids, kids, your kids, kids, kids bills. Wealth is something that you could pass on. Income, you can't pass on no income at all. Here's another thing about these channels when these people want six figure incomes and they want to mate with six figure incomes. Now, think about this. If that mate makes, let's say, $100,000 and have no wealth or no savings in the bank, your spouse or whoever it is go to go to work and get fired over sexual harassment. Now that person has zero income. What's going to happen in one month? Your butt would be on that streets or you'll be bombing off somebody or you'll be selling some stuff just to keep a roof over your head. That's why income is a great thing, but it's not everything. Now, just take a person in that same predicament. They don't make that much money, but they got $100,000 of wealth. They go to the same job. They sell. Uh, sexual uh, harass somebody they get fired now with that person with that hundred thousand dollars of wealth they can liquidate some assets to pay they to pay wherever they got to pay they can move some money around to pay where they got to pay they could borrow money off their money to pay what somebody got to pay so wealth provides an excellent safety net for us so when you see all these shows talk about, I want a person with so or so income, six figures, a quarter million dollars, that's good. Income is good. The income can build wealth and wealth can create income. But what about that person is spending every single nickel they got coming in? That's who you want. And a hiccup happens in life. Now you're on the streets. That's who you want. It's easier for a person to make $40,000 than to save $40,000. Uh, Kevin Samuels always said the average black man make $40,000. The average black man makes $40,000. Uh, $40, but what's the average uh, net worth of a black man? What is it? Is it 40? Probably not. Hold on, I got this thing up right here. Hold on, let me look at this. i tell you right here. Okay, black people, $40,000 net worth. All right. Okay, right here. According to the U.S. Census, 
7.5% of people, black people, have a net worth of $40,000. You see, it's easy to get $40,000 in income. It's hard, harder to get $40,000 in wealth. That's why you want to focus on wealth, then look at income. But when you start getting deep in your stuff, you want to increase your income to build more wealth. You see how the thing works? And people got that thing messed up. I don't know why, but if Oh, hell, hold on. Let me read another question. Hold on. Why is six figures a hot salary? Well, Lewis, that's an excellent question. Why is six figures a hot salary? Me, my personal opinion, six figures look good. It look good on paper to see a zero, 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 zero. That look good. That look good. I don't know uh, how many people out there, but six figures look good on paper. But guess what? The, much, the money you make is not a set standard of your well. Okay, let me reword this. Not necessarily money makes you successful. Not necessarily. Money does not always make you successful. For a person to be successful, they have to be successful inside a mind or what they want to accomplish, what they seem like to be successful. If you just chasing that six figures, that's the same thing as you like you almost chasing the devil. If that's all you want. Money, 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 money. I want the money. I could buy this. I want the money. I could buy this. I want the money. I could do this. Me or how I push, we want the money so we can have options in our life. A options to live where we want to live. A options to put our kids in private school or tutor if they need some help. A option to have uh, Barry to go to the dentist to get your teeth clean. An uh, option, Barry, go to the doctor to get your yearly checkup. Options. So if you just trying to get the money so you can have things, you go go down the wrong path. So, uh, the company go crash, and the, you know the first in, first out. I hate to say, it, I'm black. So if you black, you could be the last hire, first fire. So you know what's coming down the pipeline if something happened at your work. Chasing all that income when well, you need to be chasing wealth. That's your goal. So you could give something to your kids or your wife or your husband when you go. That's what God wants us to do. A good man leaves up hair nets for his children's children. That's the goal, man. All right, let's get to another question. All right here, hold on. What is high value? What is high value? Now, a lot of these uh, YouTube channels, they do have some intriguing things in high values. But today, we're just going to focus on high value value per the Bible, what the Bible tell you to do and the lessons we learn in the Bible. One of the first thing, 10 commandments, 10 commandments. Watch this. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Ah, shit. Hold on. We go. Let me show you something. Hold on, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. Let's You want to talk about 10 commandments? You want to talk about 10? All right. 10 commandments right here. Thou shalt not have other gods in form. Thou shalt not make no false images. Thou shalt not use the Lord's name in vain. Thou shalt remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Thou shalt honor thy father and mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not make uh, adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witnesses. The police do that shit all the time. Thou shalt not cover it. I just broke down. The Ten Commandments. Now, if a person could follow that stuff, that's a high value person. Covered. Thou shalt not cover. Y'all know the word covered means? That means wanting what somebody else got. Don't we see that a lot? Thou shalt not steal. That means taking other people's stuff. Don't we see that a lot? Thou shalt not make adultery. That means having sex to a person who is not your wife or husband. Wow. That's it's easy, easy to be high value if you just follow the Bible. But let's get back to some other stuff. Hold on, let me set you back up. Uh, shit. Ugh. All right, that's it. How I'm looking? I look good. How I'm looking? All right, hold on. Let me get this thing right. Hold on. All right, let's go to port number two. Uh, a value of a good person. They shall follow the steps of the Lord. They want to try to walk in the Lord's footsteps. That's a good way how to value that. Well, that's a good way of a how value person. 
Number three, a working man. You don't work, you don't eat. A working man is a good, uh, I guess, baseline of a high value person. Protector and a provider. Protect, provide, protect, provide. In these words today, you may not can provide 100%, but let's make sure you're bringing something to the table. If you ain't bringing nothing, you got to hit that road, Jack, man or woman. All right, number five, being a good Samaritan. You read about that story in the Bible where they robbed that man, beat him up, took his clothes off and put him on the side of the road. All those people, the rabbi, the politician, everybody walked uh, right beside him, act like they didn't see him. But it took that guy out the shadows that people didn't like, the Samaritans, took that man, clothed that man, checked on that man, healed him back up. That is that action is the sign of a how value person. All right. Here's another one. A good name in the streets, man. If you get in a relationship with a word, you know, people like to talk anyway. If you get in a good relationship and the word of the street is this guy's a hoe or the word of the street, this guy's a, a woman beater or the word of the streets, this guy can't hold down a job. Those are. That, that well, I don't know. That may be God trying to tell you, don't mess with that person. Find somebody else. Uh, go to the next person. A good name in the streets is a sign of a how value person. Uh, here's another one thing. A person that corrects, admit and corrects their mistakes. Uh, especially in the Old Testament. If you damage somebody's property, you got to come back and fix that property. If you whoop somebody butt. You got to come back and make sure you heal that person. If you dig a hole in the street and somebody fall in that hole, you got to make sure everything is all good. That's the sign of a good value person. All right, here we look. Number, number eight, a person that listens to the needies. You know, um, the Bible talks about a lot of things that people cry out. And the bad people in the Bible don't listen to people cries. They ignore them. God don't want us to ignore the people who cry out for help. Help people. Try to help people. Be good to people. Say, be positive to people. Help people. Don't be the person who overlook. Don't be that people who overlook that man with his clothes all beat up, robbed. All those people overlooked him. Don't be them. Help somebody. All right, number nine. Don't be a person quick to anger. That's a sign of a good value person. Not quick to anger. You know, a person who get ang anger quickly, they make a lot of mistakes. They make a lot of pain and they bring a lot of headaches. And they the be per they lose a lot of jobs, too, because somebody tell them something. They didn't like it. And boom, they explode. But guess what? You work for them. They don't work for you. So you get your ass, get your butt up out of there. All right. And number 10, love over hope. In faith, a good person has love, shows love for its loved ones, for its neighbor, for the earth is love. You see, they don't talk about these things in those relationship shows. They only focus on, I want that six figure income. But what comes with that? Can a person have six figure and be the devil in the, be the, uh, the uh, wolf in sheep's cobra? That's, that's what you want. Or you want a person who's a stand-up type of person, who do good, try to follow most of the Ten Commandments, try to follow the way of the Lord. So if you, you know, you, if you, you trust in the Lord, you work towards the world, Lord, you ain't going to do bad. So um, just guys, watch out for these shows. Those shows are for entertainment. They are pipe dreams. I listen to them now. I'm, I listen to them. For entertainment, you see, but they are pipe dreams. So, in conclusion, hold on. In conclusion, I use income to build wealth, and in turn, my wealth builds income. That is my goal. My income provides a inheritance and a safety net for the people around me. Six figures, not everything. If you're chasing six figures, this is this for esteem and credit and this and this. 
You may just be chasing the devil. Chase six figures to give you options in life. Options to provide you a better life. In life. Options. That's what we want. But guys, I'm going to end this on a video from Dr. Clark Anderson. Who talks about income in one of his uh, speeches. This is probably in the 90s the speech is from. But it's very powerful and very understanding. But guys, make sure you hit the like button. Share this content out. This may be, I don't know, just, just share it out. I'm not here to hurt nobody. I'm just trying to hear to inform people that in life you got options. And sometimes you have to work for those options so you can move like you want to move. You got it? This is my life, my money. Y'all have a great Sunday. Peace. You're going to run, run into some groups and be telling you stuff like, well, Dr. Anderson, uh, 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 I, 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 I. Why, why do black folk deserve reparation in the first place? I mean, look, look at Jesse J uh, Jackson and look at uh, uh, Michael Jackson and look at uh, 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 Michael Jordan and look at Oprah. They got money. You got to understand that wealth and income is totally different. Do not let anybody try to, try to put down black folk by pointing to a few blacks that got income. Those few blacks that got that kind of income, I can put in 1K. I've been in L.A. and take them in place I want them. You know? We they do not represent black folk in America. You know, I'm talking about all the poor blacks, all these blacks that don't have anything in America. You understand what I'm saying? Right now in America, a, a, a Hispanic or a Mexican with, 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 with a, with a, with a $3,000 a year income and can live as well as a black in America with a $40,000 a year income. As a matter of fact, if I take a white person with a $40,000 income with a, between 40 and 50 and a black person between 40 and 50, what happens there, they're not equal. They might have the same income, but white folks have 3,500 times the wealth that a black person has. It is wealth in America that determines your opportunity, not income. Do not get confused with income. You see, all these so-called blacks in America, they keep talking about middle-class blacks. Blacks got into, middle, got into the middle class through income. Whites got into the middle class through wealth. There's a difference now. Wealth means, so that means what's left over after you pay your bills. Most of the blacks in America, I can go around right now, they got high incomes. I ask them for $10, they got to figure out what bill they're not going to pay next year. Because they don't have any wealth behind them. And for the sisters again, let me tell you sisters that keep getting hung up on this gender issue and let's say your blackness. If I were to take that in terms of wealth, for instance, a white woman in America who's, who heads a family, like they talk about a female headed families, a white female is totally different from a black female. What a white female has to treat her family off of a white female head of household is one dollar. For that, a black woman only has three cents for every one dollar the white woman has to run a female headed household. So don't get hung up on this income business. Go for the wealth. And so we start talking about wealth.